Hi everyone, this is Mavic Puan, the Chemistry Guru. Now sometimes when we are doing titrations, in order for us to determine the amount of an unknown substance, it is difficult for us to employ direct titration because sometimes we will be titrating against solids or sometimes the reaction will give out gases. So it is difficult for us to do direct titration. So what we can do in this case is we employ this technique called back titration. Now back titration, basically what we do is we add an excess amount of known reagent to react with this amount of sample that I want to analyze. Then subsequently when the reaction is done, I go and determine the amount of excess reagent using another reaction. Of course, it is a lot easier for us to explain back titration using an example. So let's take a look at this exercise. All right, so what we have here is I have 1.00 gram sample of a metal X which is known to form X2 plus ions, was added to 100 cm cube of 0.5 mole per dm cube of H2SO4. After all the acid had reacted, the remaining acid would require 33.40 cm cube of 0.5 mole per dm cube sodium hydroxide for neutralization. And the question wants us to determine the molar mass of the metal and identify the element. So as mentioned previously, because the direct titration between the metal and acid, it is difficult for us to measure because we have a solid and we know that acid plus metal will give us hydrogen gas. So the bubbling of the gas, it actually interferes with our titration reading. It is a bit difficult for us to take measurement when this reaction is taking place. So what we have to do is we have to use back titration to try to figure out the amount of metal X. And what we are doing in this case is we are adding excess H2SO4, which is a known amount because the volume and concentration is here. And I know that this is in excess. So part of it would react with X and the remaining portion, we will do a titration with sodium hydroxide. So the remaining portion, I will react with sodium hydroxide. And I can also determine the amount of sodium hydroxide because the information is here, right? 33.40 cm cube of 0.5 more per dm cube of sodium hydroxide. So essentially, we have enough information to solve for the number of mole of X. Now, before we do the question proper, sometimes when we do solution stoichiometry, it is easier for us to visualize the process if we draw the entire setup. And what I would do is I will also put down all the values involving concentrations and volume inside this diagram so that later when we answer the question, it is with reference to the diagram we don't need to look at the question anymore. So if you look at the diagram, what we have is I'm adding 1.00 gram of X into 100 cm cube, 0.5 mole per dm cube of H2SO4. I know that there's a reaction and the reaction is here. This is reaction one and the balance equation is here. X plus H2SO4 to give me XSO4 equals plus hydrogen gas. Now remember the question mentioned that the charge that X will form is X2 plus, so it will form this sulfate XSO4. So after the reaction, we have excess H2SO4 and we do a titration with sodium hydroxide. So the amount of NUH required 33.40 cm cube, 0.5 mole per dm cube. And the reaction between sodium hydroxide and H2SO4, which is the second reaction, the balance equation is also here. H2SO4 and 2 sodium hydroxide to give me a salt, sodium sulfate, and 2 water. Now, my preference when we answer titration questions or solution stoichiometry questions is if there is a reaction, then we want to account for it because we need the mole ratio. If I don't know the mole ratio, then even if I can determine the number of mole of NaOH, I cannot use it to determine the number of mole of H2SO4 if I don't know the reaction and I don't know the mole ratio. So what I prefer to do at the beginning is straight away if there's a reaction, I try to balance the equation, then the mole ratio will be out. So later when we do calculation, it will be a lot easier. Now once we have all this information, basically what we do is we work backwards because I start off with this information here. Now if I have the volume and concentration of sodium hydroxide, I can determine the amount of NaOH, then using the mole ratio from the second reaction, then I can determine the number of mole of H2SO4 that is in excess inside this conical flask here. So once we have this, then I can work backwards. I know that the total number of mole of H2SO4 added is this amount. 
because I have the volume and concentration and part of this H2SO4 reacts with X so the difference you give me the number of mole of H2SO4 that actually reacts with X and from the mole ratio involving the first reaction I can determine the number of mole of X so roughly the plan is here so let us run through the steps so the first thing as mentioned we determine the number of mole of sodium hydroxide which is the titration I have 33.4 divided by 1000 multiplied by 0 0.5 I'll get this amount 1.670 times 10 to the power of minus 2 so once we have this I can make use of the second equation and the mole ratio to determine the number of mole of H2SO4 that is in excess from the second reaction the mole ratio for H2SO4 to sodium hydroxide is 1 is to 2 so the ratio will be here so therefore the number of mole of H2SO4 in excess that reacts with sodium hydroxide it will be half times the number of mole of sodium hydroxide half times 1.670 times 10 to the power of minus 2 this will work out to be 8.350 times 10 to the power of minus 3 so we determine the number of mole of H2SO4 in excess the next thing we want to do is how much of the H2SO4 reacts with X the total number of mole of H2SO4 is 100 divided by 1000 multiplied by 0 0.5 which is 0 0.05 so basically what we have back to the diagram above is I've already determined the number of mole of H2SO4 that reacts with sodium hydroxide which is this value here right 8.350 times 10 to the power of minus 3 and I have the total number of mole of H2SO4 which is the big box here which we have also determined which is this value 0 0.05 so the difference is this big box minus this value here I can get the amount or the number of mole of H2SO4 that reacts with X so which is back to here the number of mole of H2SO4 that actually reacts with X will be the total number of mole of H2SO4 minus the number of mole of H2SO4 which is in excess and reacts with sodium hydroxide so this value will be 0 0.05 minus 8.350 times 10 to the power of minus 3 this will work out to be 0 0.04165 so once we have that we can use the mole ratio for the first equation the first equation is here the number of mole of X to H2SO4 is 1 is to 1 so we can determine the number of mole of X to number of mole of H2SO4 is 1 is to 1 so the number of mole of X is equal to the number of mole of H2SO4 which is 0 0.04165 now once we have the number of mole and we have the mass correct the mass is 1 gram so I can work out the molar mass of this X which is mass divided by number of mole 1 gram over 0 0.04165 this will work out to be 24.0 gram per mole now molar mass it is the mass of one mole of that substance so we have a unit gram per mole and usually we round this off to one decimal place 24.0 gram per mole so what we can do next is of course we can compare this in the periodic table then we see which metal which is in group 2 because it forms a plus 2 charge so we know that it is in group 2 which metal which is in group 2 where the AR or the atomic mass is closest to 24.0 so if we look through the list the closest metal that we will have it will be magnesium because the mass number for magnesium is 24.3 so we know that X will be equal to magnesium alright so that was the discussion to talk about the concepts of back titration if you have learned something useful from this video please give me the thumbs up, like this video, and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more weekly video lessons. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.